This is a video to help you get started with the free software traction waveform uh, recording software that's pretty comprehensive, uh, comparable to most other uh, fully functioning DAWs like Pro Tools and Adobe Audition, uh, but it's free. Um, so we're going to walk through getting set up with traction waveform today. We'll start by heading over to Traction Waveform Free. You can Google that, search for it on your browser of choice. So you may see you know, some uh, other options that have paid Google to be in the top listing here, but what you want is to find the Traction website and click on Waveform Free. So here we are on the Traction site. I'm gonna hit Free Download and enter in my email address. You can create your own uh, anonymous separate email for this if you're not comfortable sharing your details with Traction. But I'm just going to use these here. And I am not a robot. Yet. So now they've sent us a verification email. We'll go over to my Gmail account. Traction here. Verify my email. It may be in your spam uh, or promotional section of your email, depending on what your settings are. So have a look through there if you can't find it. And then we'll enter in our details here. And there we are. We're going to log in here. We're going to download the Mac version. As always, uh, if you're working uh, with a PC or Linux or Raspberry Pi um, and you're having trouble, just send me a message at tech at cfru.ca. So we've got the download here. I'm going to minimize all this for now and we'll click on the installer. Continue, continue. Make sure you diligently read the agreement, continue, and agree. Enter your user password if prompted. Your computer user password, that is. The installation was successful. So I'll close that. In Finder, we should be able to find Waveform. I'm going to double click on that to open it for the first time. So you can choose uh, to try the new audio engine or continue with the old engine. I'm gonna go with the, the new and agree once more to the agreement. Now here's again where we'll enter in the details from uh, our login on the uh, waveform site. So the email that you used and the password and click register. So you can decide whether or not you want to uh, give Waveform any uh, details about crashes or issues that, that come up with the program. And we'll get some notifications. Uh, and sometimes uh, you'll have this warning here, unable to check for updates. I'm going to go to downloads. If you have audio plugins on your computer, you can do a scan and uh, the program will locate them, make sure they're accessible by this program here. So I'm going to hit scan now. You don't have to do this. If you don't have any audio plugins already on your device, you can just uh, leave this section B. But you'll see over on the left here, these are the steps to set us up. Now, once your registration has gone through, you'll see this notification, registration complete. Hit OK, and we may need to enter in the password once more over here on the downloads page. Now, this is a, a little bit of a glitch that I've noticed in the process here. It's not a big deal, but if you 
go over to downloads here and you see the download manager, which helps you stay up to date with, um, with the program and download additional software if you want. Um, I'm gonna hit update via download manager and it's telling me here that I'm that it's unable to find the download manager. So that just means that I don't have that installed yet on my computer. So I'm gonna to go to traction.com to find that item. And so on the same page that I grabbed waveform 11 from the installer earlier, I'm going to take the download manager right here. So we're gonna download that, go through the same process really of installing it. I'll minimize this. We'll continue through same process here. Agree. Enter in your user password for your device if prompted. You may have to do that a few times depending on your security settings. Now we can see the download manager here. So I'm just going to minimize that for the moment. We're going to close the installer. We can throw that in our trash and we'll go back. We can see now on our downloads that the download manager and the way and waveform 11 are both installed on our computer. So uh, next step is to set up our audio device. And in this little interface here, we can um, pick which audio input we're going to use. You could use your built-in input from the computer mic, uh, but for the sake of better audio quality, we're going to pick uh, our USB mic that I've got plugged in here. So um, for the output, we'll set that to the built-in output, which could be headphones, it could be your computer speakers. Um, and then Blue Icicle is my USB microphone. Check, check, check. And I can see it's popping up in the little test window here, which is good. We can leave the sample rate at 44.1 and the buffer size at 512 samples. Um, now, if you're finding that the program is kind of glitching out, you could uh, extend uh, your buffer rate a little bit, make it a bit larger. Uh, and that can help with, uh, you know, glitches if you're hearing little cutting in and out or the program is stopping and starting when you're trying to record uh, a larger buffer size will help with that. I'm going to go on to, we don't need to set up the mini MIDI device. Uh, we're not going to be playing any MIDI instruments at the moment. Uh, we've already scanned for plugins. Uh, we could scan for loops, uh, but I'm going to skip that as well. There are a lot of loops available. Um, for traction that are handy if you're doing a podcast and want to use copyright free uh, backing music, you know, you could grab some of their free loops. It offers the uh, opportunity to download a demo song, uh, but I'm going to skip that as well uh, as we're not going to be doing a music editing project here. Uh, but there is also a tutorial video um, that will explain more multi-track recording on this. Now on to part two of the traction waveform recording setup for CFRU. Once you've got waveform installed, you'll either be looking at the projects window or the welcome window. And either one has a link to create a new project. So if you click on that, it gives you this little window where you can title your project and you can decide where you're going to save it. Now I've set up uh, a folder on my desktop and chosen to save all of my projects there, but you can designate any folder or any part of your computer to save your sessions. Now we're going to go with the default setting and make sure that open default edit is clicked. And then we'll, we're going to hit create project. Now this might look a little overwhelming to start, but we're going to simplify this for our purposes. So I'm going to start by just hitting this little X here beside search. We're going to close that right off. So we don't need that right now. And we're going to then remove the tempo and marker tracks. So if I right click on there and then click again on show tempo track, it'll remove that and do the same with show marker track, remove that. Now we've got 
eight tracks to work with and we probably don't need that many so I'm going to remove a few of these tracks as well. So if you right click on each track you can select delete track and we'll go down and we'll remove all but five of the tracks that are on here. So there we've got five tracks to work with and we can adjust the size to give us some more visual space to work with. You'll notice that um, little pop-ups come up uh, to uh, explain things as well to you. But for all intents and purposes, we're going to use just five tracks to create a radio show. Um, so you've got your track names here. And first thing I would do is rename the tracks. So we'll say voice one, enter. Okay. So uh, now we can see that we've got our audio coming in uh, on our analog one input right now, which is what we want. If it's not coming through, you can double click on that, sorry, double click, and uh, you'll see some options for what options are available for your uh, input here. So I'm sticking with analog one, maybe, um, you know, if you have another USB mic or a second input uh, with another microphone going into it, you might want to change voice two to analog two. That'll just depend on what your configuration is. Uh, we'll mostly be dealing with voice one in, uh, in my setup here. So voice one, voice two, music one, music two, and effects. The next thing I'm going to do is, uh, you'll notice at the top we see things divided into bars. Um, that's because this is developed as a music software, but it's uh, it lends itself very well to podcasting and broadcast recording. So what we're going to do is just change that to uh, seconds and minutes. So if you go down here to this little arrow in the bottom left corner, click on that, and the little view tab, I'll go up to time base and then pick seconds. And now you can see the top is in seconds and minutes, which is a little lends itself to uh, radio and uh, podcast production a little more. So uh, the next little change to make because we're not working with music and we're not making loops and that kind of stuff is we're going to take, you can sort of see as I go along here, the cursor wants to snap to that uh, those time divisions there are snapped to the grid, but we want to change that so that we can edit it freely without um, without our cursor snapping to those points. So if you go to snap to grid down here on the bottom left again, and click snap to grid again, and now you can see it moves freely along there. So that'll be a lot easier for editing. Um, and I think we're just about ready. Now, before we do any recording here, what you want to do is save this as a template and that that'll allow you to keep this blank template at your disposal whenever you want to go and record a new show um, so you don't have to go through this whole process of deleting tracks and changing the layout and everything so the way to do that is just go to the file menu down here and save edit as template and you can call it whatever you'd like and make sure include clips is not selected there and then hit OK. And there we go. Um, so now we can close all this down. Let's just see what happens when we want to create a new session going forward. I'm going to just discard my changes. And so now uh, if we go to new project, anytime you want to create a new show, you can give it a title. Make sure it's going to save where you want it to save. And then instead of default, we're going to select my show or whatever name you gave that template and create project. And you can see that just called up the layout that we want and you're ready to record a new show. So let's get started recording a show. Let's, let's do a little introduction uh, on our voice one track to arm a track for recording. You want to hit the record button there. And then to start actually running the record, you want to just hit this record button down here on the right. You're listening to my show on CFRU 93.3 FM in Guelph, Ontario. Now I just hit space bar to stop the recording, but you could hit the record button again. Uh, and it does the same thing. Now just to clean up that track, we can do stuff like 
drag these arrows back to trim a little bit so that there's no dead air. Now you want to make sure you're not clipping any of the uh, ends or any of the waveforms that you see here. You want to just make your edits in the silent flat part of this waveform. Um, now you can zoom in also by using your pinch function on your mouse pad, or you can go to view and zoom down here. So I'm going to zoom in just a little bit and scroll back with two fingers on the mouse pad as well. Now we want this to start right off the top. So I'm going to drag that right back to zero. Again, trim a little bit of that there. And let's just hear how that sounds. By clicking up in the time section also, you can move your cursor around. But let's go back here and hit play or spacebar. You're listening to my show on CFRU 93.3 FM in Guelph, Ontario. So there you go. Now we can, I can tell this is already a little quiet. Um, so I'm going to boost this level up. We can boost that level really easily. Um, I'm actually going to get rid of these help uh, tabs here. And you can do that just by clicking on the help button at the bottom here and remove enable pop up help. Okay, so now uh, we're dealing with this track here. And if you look at this section over here, you see a little gain section. And if you drag, click and drag, you can actually turn, if you look at your waveform up at the top, you can drag and crank up or turn down the level of, of that section of audio. So I'm gonna set it right about there. What you don't want is for it to go beyond the frame of your uh, workspace here. If it goes outside of these frames, it's going to be distorted. So you wanna listen back, make sure it sounds good to you. Let's check that out. You're listening to my show on CFRU 93.3 FM in Guelph, Ontario. There we go. So we've got a piece of audio, uh, an intro recorded there, and we can now drop uh, some music in if we want, maybe a theme song or something like that. So we can drag that in right from uh, an MP3 file on your desktop or in your music library. So I'm going to go to my finder into my iTunes library. And I'm going to grab a track from Escape from the Zoo which is a beat tape by Accurate. So if I just drag this right over onto the music, onto the music track, one or two, and close this window, we can see that there's a little dialog box asking if I wanna make a copy of that to our Waveform Sessions project folder. And that's always a good idea because it keeps all of the material for your show in one place. Uh, it can be difficult if you save it in a bunch of different locations to piece it together if you needed to restart and go back and edit your, your session. Um, so what we're gonna do is make copy and let's just listen to this coming in. I'm gonna drag it back right to the top so it actually plays under my voiceover. Let's just hear how that sounds. You're listening to my show on CFRU 93.3 FM in Guelph, Ontario. Sounds pretty good. Um, I would say the voice is not standing out entirely over that louder section of music. And so another option we have is to create automation, which allows us to have the level of this track a little lower as it's under the voiceover and then pop right up to full volume when the track kicks in and the, the intro is done. So you do that by clicking this A button at the end of your track, A for automation. Go to automatable parameters for this track, volume and pan plugin and volume. And so now we can see this line on our track here and it allows us to draw levels into that track. So if I double click, it creates a little edit point. Maybe I'll create a few right around that there. And then we'll drag this down and we'll have this just under the voice. And maybe even we can change how fast it turns up and everything. So I'm gonna duck that right until about there, until the voiceover is finished. Let's just hear how that sounds. You're listening to my show on CFRU 93.3 FM in Guelph, Ontario. So pretty cool. It's uh, sounding a lot better now. There's one more thing we can do uh, with the voiceovers um, to really make them stand out against the music that we're playing in the show, and that is add a compressor. 
Now, compressors and limiters uh, come as plugins in software like this. And so the way to add a plugin, you can see the processing section of our audio chain here. Uh, the way to add a plugin into this chain is to grab this plus and drag it right in here. And I'll probably bring it in right after our input level. So we'll put it right there and go to waveform effects and compressor limiter. And there we go. Now we can see that there's a compressor in the chain and that's gonna make your voice stand out a little more um, than just an, a straight microphone recording into the system. So the last step for the compressor for beginners is to load up a preset for vocal. So you can see down here, there's the parameters of the compression. And there's a little graphic of the settings here as well. But I'd recommend for beginners, just click on load and go to vocals. And now let's just listen to how that sounds, if, if it sounds any different, any better. We also wanna just watch to make sure that our levels aren't distorting. This is a little level meter over here. So play that back from the beginning. You're listening to my show on CFRU 93.3 FM in Guelph, Ontario. So I'd say this is still a little quiet uh, for the music. So I might just go back to this track. If we select this track again and just boost that level a tiny bit more. In Guelph, Ontario. You want to compare that to the louder points in the music. So listen to a bit of the loud part of the music and jump back. I'm in Guelph, Ontario. And that's sounding pretty good. You could turn it up a tiny bit more, but again, you just want to watch that you're not clipping your level over here. In Guelph, Ontario. So that's looking pretty good. Um, and I'll show you just another trick here to, if you wanted to layer a few things, um, you know, drop in another song that overlaps the last track here. You can do that at any point. Let's just grab another song. Okay, and I'm gonna drag this into music two. And again, we'll make a copy into our folder. You can also remember my choice and apply to all, and that'll do that each time you import something. So we don't want it to be starting too soon towards this song's completion. So we could drag it back just as the other song is fading out and just listen to the way that this plays through. So you can get a sense of how you can create a whole radio show, uh, whether it's a spoken word or a music show, just with four tracks even. You don't necessarily, maybe even three tracks. You don't necessarily need the second voice uh, unless you have a co-host, of course, um, or the effects channel. That's uh, There's some basics there for you. One more thing I wanted to show you is that you can edit the length if you wanted to cut down a section of music, maybe to just a short transition. Uh, you can trim the ends of any file using these arrows here. So if I drag this arrow back, I can cut this at what any, whatever point I want. Uh, and then if I zoom in, you can see this little square here at the end of the file, a little white square there. That's your fade box. So if you click on that and drag it in, you can cre automatically create a fade out. So if you want to listen to that... <laughs> So that's a nice slow fade there. Uh, and we can, of course, drop in uh, our next section of voiceover uh, just by setting the cursor where we want it, making sure that voice one is armed. So that's off and that's on. And then just hitting record. That was accurate from Escape from the Zoo on CFRU 93.3 FM in Guelph, Ontario. And of course, we can adjust the levels of that piece of audio as we like as well. Again, just click on the audio and adjust the gain down here. Uh, and if you click off, you can see that our levels aren't 
going beyond the frame there. So let's just hear that little end of that track as our, and we could move our voice around here. Let's just hear that. That was accurate from Escape from the Zoo on CFRU 93.3 FM in Guelph, Ontario. So the last step here, if you've got your whole show together, it's all organized in this session view and you're happy with the way it sounds, the last step before sending your completed show over to your program coordinator is to go to the file menu, export, render to a file, and just make sure that MP3 is selected up here. Uh, typically, WAV files are just too large uh, for us to move around, so we'll stick with MP3 files and click on Render. And it's usually pretty quick. That was quite fast. Uh, now if we go to Projects, we can see under export, Exported Audio, CFRU2, Edit 1. That was my export there, so that's my finished file. But I can also, if I minimize this, I can go to my Sessions folder and the project and exported and you can see your MP3 file is right there. You're listening to my show on CFRU 93.3 FM in Guelph, Ontario. And that's it. As always, if you have any trouble setting this up or if you get stuck, feel free to send a message to tech at cfru.ca and I'll help you out.